Noah, it's great to have you on the show. I'm excited to get to know just a little bit about you guys' story because everything I read about you guys seems very cloak and dagger in a very cool way. So I'm anxious to get to know more about Mainframe, which, of course, is your band and kind of about what you guys do and how you manage to do it. So uh, give us some quick background on the band because this is not your everyday Christian rock band that we would normally run into here in the States. And I'll let you kind of explain what that's all about. Yeah, thanks, Paul. It's great to be on. I appreciate you uh, inviting us here. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we we try to keep it mysterious and secretive, mainly because of the the place where we're living and the, and the work that we're doing. Main friend, the band, is just our two families, uh, my wife and I and uh, Drew and Rachel, and uh, got together as we met each other in the Far East, as we have it. I'll just leave the place out so uh, to protect the innocent. And uh, just uh, I've always appreciated uh, playing music together. And uh, have always um, just liked to rock out, especially now um, we've we've moved to another place. The two of our families kind of uh, even more remote in our uh, uh, ministry, and have um, just enjoyed continue to enjoy to play music together as a hobby. Nice, nice. Okay, so we're we're not going to get into where you guys are located because once again, I mean, we don't want to get anybody in any hot water because obviously it's not exactly the the most friendly towards what you guys it's a, do. It's a- it's a closed place. <laughs> right, right. It's a closed place, which is uh, is is good to know. Now, for those who are around you guys and do interact with you guys, I mean, y'all obviously play and record in that area. Am I assuming right? Right, right. we do. Okay. And uh, even before when we were in a larger city and so forth, we were able to play together. And, and now we're out kind of in a remoter area, but we continue to play and do most of the recording from a home studio. Okay. Now, what do the people who meet you out there think that you do? We, we, they think that we, for, uh, let's see how to put this, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, and don't say anything that's going to get you into trouble. I'm just having a hard time imagining, you know, you guys like recording punk rock music in, in a house and then like it being something that no one else ever hears. And I, I always kind of wonder what kind of questions would come out yeah, of that. Yeah, the, the music, is, it's, not, it's obviously not our full-time job. Right, right. Professionally. I'm a, I'm actually a professional. Now, uh, what led you guys to A, want to, well, I guess I don't know if there's a B to this, but what makes you want to <laughs> ca- kind of carry the, the, uh, the, the, the boon or whatever? I mean, you want to carry the torch of, of making punk rock music that is not only not not necessarily in vogue these days, but to make right. Christian rock, but then also to make it in a in an area where maybe that's not so friendly towards the very idea of Christian themes in in art. I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a very good question to answer you in a punk rock way. <laughs> You know, I don't care that it's not in vogue. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> Who cares? You know. You know, I've always loved punk and have, you know, over the years also enjoyed other styles of music, including folk rock. And Drew and, Drew and Rachel and Naomi and I have, have also played more acoustic stuff. I play mandolin as well. Oh, wow. I enjoy that. But even I've recorded some other stuff uh, under another band name, uh, the Offshore Account, so you can check that out on Bandcamp as well. Okay. And, um, but when I, I, I continue to write and write and write, and some stuff, it just uh, is bottled up and it just doesn't have an outlet for uh, acoustic or folk, and it just has to be done through punk rock. And so when I had a body of music ready uh, for a punk album and approached Brandon at Indivision about it, and he's like, let's go for it. And so we laid those tracks down, and everybody had a lot of energy to do it. It just felt right, and it, it was the right thing to do. And so... It, None of us ever care about what's popular or getting famous and whatever. It's just about getting it out and uh, rocking out and speaking the truth. So that's the best way I can answer that. Fair enough. Well, I dare say, though, it is kind of funny that you mentioned that you don't want to be famous because that kind of goes without saying. It seems like being famous would be kind of detrimental to your health at this point. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, we don't We don't care. But we do hope that the, the music can get a good reach and that a lot of sure. people can... Who would who would appreciate it or like it would yeah. be able to have access to it and, and like it? Right, right, for sure. However, you know, however many people that is. Yeah, days. nice. Now, your current single is called "Burn the Boats," which is also the name of the the new record that you guys released recently. Uh, tell us a little bit about that song. "Burn the Boats." Um, yeah, it's the it's the single and the title track of the record because it really embodies the whole idea of leaving the past behind when God calls you to something. 
uh, whether it be to work abroad or to work from home or to do some other ministry. Uh, every Christian has a calling. Every Christian needs to be obedient to it to uh, to get to to go uh, into the ministry into this new life that Christ has given us, and to to burn the boats behind because. Uh, we've entered a war, we've entered a place where we need to, um, in, in some sense, uh, look toward conquest, and there's no going back, can't turn back. So that's what that song's about. It's a little, it's written as a kind of a sci-fi, sci-fi kind of a theme, but I hope that the message gets across. If anyone has seen the album cover for Burn the Boats, I mean, it's definitely entrenched in that kind of sci-fi theme that you just mentioned, which is interesting because, I mean, mind you, I am not a foremost expert on punk rock. I have enjoyed quite a bit of it in my years, but I don't know that I've ever noticed anybody couple the two of sci-fi and punk rock which i think is mm-hmm. is quite intriguing yeah it actually came about a little more sci-fi than i had than i had expected i was working with the artist and he had kind of that more of that direction i thought let's go with it i had i guess i had something more in mind of uh, the story of the song goes that this uh there's this guy and he's going along his business and he's 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 secretly recruited by this uh this secret organization and uh and then gets into it and is trained, and then they eventually go to battle. Or they go to they go into it, uh, and uh, all along the way, he is uh, meeting with uh, victory and defeat and uh, battle and so forth and intrigue and cloak and dagger stuff like you mentioned, maybe. And uh, but all along the way, he hears the voice of these of this, uh, for example, a, a lion or this uh, the dove, and then finally the father. So you have the Trinity there. And then after it's all over with, he, he understands that uh, the father tells him, well done, I've been with you all along. I, I've been with you at every step. And that you were mm, initially called and then recruited and then trained and then taken into battle. And this whole process has been uh, not just you, but, but me with you. And so that's kind of what the song's about. Nice. Very cool. Now, one of the other tracks that we're going to play is actually a cover song, which me being slow as I am, I didn't notice was a cover song until you guys had posted something about it on your Facebook. I'm like, oh, that's why it sounds vaguely familiar. But uh, you guys did a cover of uh, a value pack song. Is that correct? That's it. Their old song, uh, Don't Look Back, which is also kind of keeping that theme of burn the boats, you know, and value pack. uh, I was a big fan back in those days. And that song has uh, always been a, one of those songs that you uh, sing along to in the car for me and had the chance to cover it. I thought it was, uh, that was the one to do. <laughs> I love it. I hope you guys can like it too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I think we're going to spin that during the show as well, so we'll uh, hope that listeners get a chance to enjoy that because that's, I don't know, I I love it when a band can kind of show you a different side of themselves where even though it may be a a song that's kind of in the same vein as something that they might do, it's kind of like a a mini tribute within an album to say, hey, you know, we really like this song, this is what we like to do with it, and I think that's always interesting. Yeah, I thought it would be fun, Paul. You know, you get pop pop covers of punk songs and you get punk covers of, of pop songs, uh, and both both boys around, but not very many punk bands cover a punk band. Yeah, in, the, in that same thing. And I always thought about uh, my my personal opinion on covering is that uh, the cover ought to be something really different, a different way, or it ought to be pretty much spot on to the way, to the original. And so in this case, we've we've tried to be as faithful as we could to uh, Value Pack's original take on it in the terms of the speed and the and the power and the uh, the harmonies and everything. Uh, and so, of course, it'll have the mainframe uh, stamp on it, but um, we tried to uh, to do it right now, kind of as a tribute. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, have you ever reached out to the guys in Value Pack? We tried. Nobody can get a hold of them. Oh, okay. So if you're listening now, Value Pack guys, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Brandon, Brandon at IVM said, too, he's like, I hope it won't be a problem with, with Value Pack. And I'm like, well, just... Just put it out there, and if we're approached, then uh, and if they give us a cease and desist, then we'll cease and desist. But I, you know, I just hope they know it's a heads, it's a hats off to them and to right. uh, to tooth and nail you know, at the time, and so forth. And that we just like the music, but I do hope to get in touch with them, and uh, I'd love to you to grab them on the show too if you get the opportunity (laughs) yeah for sure that'd be fun that'd be fun it's interesting because i remember uh back when value pack was brand new and they were signed to tooth and nail i think i got a a sampler that was either free or was like a dollar or something at Mm -hmm. at the bookstore where i shopped that was two songs from value pack and two songs from goatee hook and uh that was fun stuff sure yeah 
Awesome. Cool deal. Yeah, those, are the, those are the times you could discover some fun, some fun music. A lot of times those samplers are pretty hit or miss, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you really find a gem, you know, among among all those things. And you're like, oh, there's at least one song that you could really latch on to and love for the rest of your life. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Now, what do you think doing uh, this and doing music like you do in such a unique way and kind of having to do it in secret? Ha- have you learned anything through that process that has been maybe at least... Uh, from your viewpoint, unique to you and and kind of doing all of this? Sure. You know, just always trying to learn to write better songs in terms of, uh, you know, construction and composition and effect. We've been working on more punk punk music rather than um, folk music. It's really given a good channel to learn some things about how you can really communicate a a message that's that's neither immature or uh, incomplete uh, within a a short amount of time and in a, a very fast and hard and impactful way sure so i don't know if we do it very well but i put a lot of thought into it anyway (laughs) and i hope to do better and better yeah for sure man now a lot of people of course uh at least during the heyday of music always had like a producer that they went to who kind of would speak into the music and help record and all that kind of stuff that is kind of behind the scenes that most people who like music don't necessarily know about but with you guys being as secretive as you are and doing it in a home studio i'm imagining that you guys are kind of self-producing all of this yeah we're 100 percent diy self-produced uh do all our writing and recording nice right, in, the, in the home studio indie as indie gets and so if there's any failings with the production and so forth it's all it's all for me to blame <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough now yeah. did you uh, at any point have you ever like reached out uh for for i guess people to speak into kind of what you guys are doing from just either just suggestions or ideas uh just from outside kind of the your own kind of bubble that you guys have have uh uh, yourselves in at the moment sure there's a uh not even a handful but one or two people i really trust to give to give advice into our uh not only the production but the songwriting too and one is a guy who is also in christian work who the two of us and my sister had a, tr- had a trio punk rock trio in high school we've stayed in touch over the years and so i always run stuff by him and and see what he thinks and there's another guy who basically taught me the uh the blues scale in college, a real rocker. And I always uh, run things by him as well. I trust his opinion. Nice. Very cool. Apart from that, you know, your mom's always going to be like, it's great. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And she's, she's a fan, of course. But, uh, but yeah, it's good to have people close to you and um, who can, that you trust and who know what they're talking about to give insight into some things. And it's, in, it's, in, and it's important, too, that you shouldn't take for granted, that you actually listen to them. And uh, try to take their advice to heart. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Well, of course, I mean, you guys, uh, uh, as we've kind of mentioned, I think a little bit more off air than on, but um, you guys are not, you know, out playing shows or anything because that's not, you know, that's not e- either A, what you guys are about at the moment, and B, it's not um, advisable for your situation. But um, th- do you guys often just kind of jam out the songs kind of in private as opposed as uh, often, in addition yeah, to just do. recording? Yeah, we do. It's good, and that uh, helps us get these uh, harmonies written and um, start to think about how, how the composition ought to be and so forth. And so we all get together all the time, and it's a lot of fun. Very cool, man. Very cool. Sometimes we'll even do it on the acoustic instruments and see how it flushes out. Yeah, it, it all it all adds up. Sweet deal. Well, dude, I mean, there there are a few things more in rock and roll than playing punk music, doing it DIY, not caring if anyone ever sees you guys playing, in addition to playing it in a somewhat dangerous situation. I mean, that it's hard to get too much more punk than that. But uh, despite the <laughs> fact that you guys are doing that, which is, is a brave or some might say foolish, I'm not. But, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of a crazy situation to be doing what you're doing. But uh, despite all of it's that... It's where we are right now, and we're happy to be doing it. Yeah. And... Uh, if it turns out that it's a, it's pretty punk rock, then that's what it is. Right, right. But if it's not, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, despite the, the ultimate punkness of your situation, Noah, as the lead singer of a punk rock band, what would you say is the most un-rock and roll thing about you? Oh, man. You know, that's a hard one. There are probably a bunch of un-rock and roll things about me. 
I don't know how to answer that, Paul. <laughs> well, obviously, I don't want to get too personal on anything that will be like, oh, that's that dude. Um, what's, but, you Paul, know. What's the mo- like, how would you answer that question? I don't know. I mean, may- the thing that usually comes up the most about me that I think people kind of look at me sideways about is that I, I have a strong affinity for the old school version of the Powerpuff Girls cartoon. I find it hilarious and very amusing that's really to watch. really punk. Powerpuff Girls is really punk rock. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Well, I suppose it depends on who you ask, but, yeah. you know, stuff like that, or, or you know, I mean, it, heaven knows that I've done goofy like, things you know, because I have a three-year-old that I would not ever uh, necessarily cop to on, on a stage in any way, but, you know, things like wearing, you know, little little girl hair bows and my, my goatee and things like that, you know, so, you know, oh. stuff that doesn't make you feel necessarily like a punk rocker, I guess. Well, I think if you're thinking in those terms, and for people who are who have to uh, visualize in their mind what punk rock is, what, what it materially looks like in, yeah. in, in terms of clothes or what you watch on TV, then those people are posers. Yeah. They're not real <laughs> punk rockers. Wouldn't you this say? This is true. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of the That's, whole idea, I guess, of punk rock is to just not really care and an inform attitude. about what people think. That's not, that's not, it's, not, it's not if you, you, oh, I play pink guitar and spike my hair, so I'm punk rock. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> But don't you think uh, it, it's, it's probably a, it's an attitude and it's a way of life. Yeah, and, and that's why I think that Christians make the best punks because you you're not only in rebellion but you're you're but you have a you have a truth to speak out. Right, you have a real message to deliver, and it's not just that I don't care about anything. It's just I don't I don't play the world's games and I don't belong to you. I belong right. I belong to Christ and I'm not of this world. And I'm going to not only speak out against it, but I'm going to speak up for something that's right. And we're, yeah. going to, we're going to have something. We're going to work towards something better or more righteous. I think. I think that Chris, the more more Christian rock ought to be punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Now, don't think I haven't. Uh, I haven't caught uh, wind of the fact that you still haven't told me anything that you find un un rock and roll about yourself. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess if you if you mean it in terms of like the cliche or the you know, those those things yeah. people think of when they the stereotypes of rock and roll, sure, there, there would be a ton of things about me that aren't rock and roll. Uh, you know, I really have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to waste your time here. I didn't think to. of this as being that deep of a question, but you have turned this into kind of an existential crisis. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay, uh, man. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. I'll tell you what. We'll. I'll tell you what. We'll put it on hold. We'll put a pin in that, and yeah, we'll find another excuse to talk again in the future. But I want to okay. report back from you about, sure. uh, or better yet, you know what? Here's here's the one thing that I've found for people who can't figure it out for themselves. Ask your wife, and the wife. next time we talk, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good. That's a good one. Yeah, she'll give you the complete list. I'm sure it's rather long. <laughs> Uh, you, for sure. You, oh, I can't tell you that over the phone. Yeah, <laughs> um, Probably, yeah, don't. <laughs> now, see, here's what's funny is uh, I'm I'm sure at least at some point you've heard of the bands uh, Waverly and of Fireflight. Well, they have two members who are married to each other, and oh. I had them on the show back to back, and I made them tell me the other one's least rock and roll thing. Oh, okay. Under the guise that they knew that their spouse was going to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny because the guy kept on just like digging the hole deeper because everything he said was really about him, um, but n- but it was kind of under the guise that it was somehow about her. And then all of her stuff was like, yeah, he's totally in rock and roll because of this. <laughs> <laughs> so he was super nice about it. She was just like, I don't care. Yeah. He- <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've got a lot of blind spots to my own rock and rollness. But the point is, I don't go out and try to be rock and roll or... Oh, no, no. Uh, I mean, sometimes I even make a point to not be rock and roll. And maybe that's punk rock, but I don't know. Well, that this works, stuff, man. That works. This stuff is not, I don't, I don't know. I don't think about it. That yeah. Much. <laughs> yeah man for sure for sure well dude i think that that's fair i think that that's fair and plus i mean you guys have like i said a far we'll more different situation than, than just full expose. say what we'll get my wife on next time and she'll give you the full expose yeah there you go <laughs> fair enough dude fair enough yeah. cool deal well man thank you so much for hanging out with us it's been fun to kind of get to know a little bit more about you guys and about the, the music and a little bit about the situation even though i know we can't get too too specific but i think that that makes it even a little bit cooler and i hope that uh, everything continues to go smoothly for you guys and we have uh, more music out of you guys before too much longer 
Yeah, I appreciate it. We're we're working on some new stuff. I've got a, a couple of songs already, uh, at least uh, partially recorded. Cool. And if you get a if you get a chance too, you can check out our um, acoustic um, side side project, as it were, the offshore accounts. There's a band camp there, and, and we're going to be putting out a new album uh, this next year, hopefully with the, a full length of that, and hopefully. If I can beg Brandon over at Indie Vision to uh, to run that or at least help help with promotion, and then, uh, then you'll get a chance. It's it's also uh, this, us, the same setup, just playing different instruments and having a little bit uh, different kind of uh, different kind of a song, uh, a sound, okay. and a, a place to put some of the um, either slower or lighter tunes. Sounds good, man. Well, yeah. dude, it was a pleasure. We'll talk again soon, and uh, you know we'll be looking forward to whatever comes out of y'all's camp. And uh, just stay safe out there, man. Thanks, Paul. You take care.